Hey guys, it's Miracle Max back again. Today I'm working on a Nissan X-Trail with a suspected blown head gasket. What I'm going to do today is give you various diagnostic methods to actually prove whether it's a blown head gasket or not. Let's get into it. one of the most basic checks you can do is actually listen to it when it starts up first thing in the morning. This has been sitting outside, it was a cold night last night, below zero. Let's see if it starts evenly on all cylinders. So it sounds fairly consistent across the board doesn't it? Next into the workshop. Next on the diagnostic checklist would be to pull off the filler cap, oil filler cap, and have a look at what's inside. What do you notice there? A lot of condensation, looks like iced coffee. That's generally the sign that water or coolant is getting into our oil. What else do we need to check? Well, let's have a look at the dipstick. We pull out our dipstick, and let's have a look at that. You can see up the top here that there's some white milky substance, um, which is that iced coffee thing that we uh, see when we find a blown head gasket. So that's some basic checks. We'll do some more complex checks now. Of course, the water in the oil has to be coming from somewhere, doesn't it? That comes from our cooling system. So we need to see if there's any coolant in there, for instance, which there is. But more importantly, let's have a look at the level you can see there that the level is actually quite low. Another thing to check is the overflow bottle. There's our overflow bottle and we can clearly see that there's no coolant in it whatsoever, right down below the minimum level. Another basic test that you can do to check for a blown head gasket is to have a look at it, the exhaust. If large amounts of water comes out, particularly under acceleration, that could be an indication that water is going into the exhaust system and uh, a clue that there is a blown head gasket. So while some of that may be condensation, keep in mind that uh, this has been sitting outside overnight, but we're still seeing a lot of water dripping on the ground. And of course the engine is now warm, so most of that uh, water or condensation should have uh, evaporated by now. For the next steps, we're going to need more equipment and we need the engine up to operating temperature. You may also experience some bubbles in the coolant coming out through the radiator. Doesn't look too bad in this case, but uh, generally if it's going into the cooling system, the combustion gases, you'll see a lot of bubbles um, at idle or even under acceleration. Now that the engine's hot, I'm going to pressure test the cooling system. Keep in mind that uh, if you do have a radiator cap on at uh, any point when it's hot, you need to be aware that this system will be under pressure. How can you tell if it's under pressure? Squeeze the hose. If it's really, really hard, to push together, you know the system's under pressure. You don't want to get burnt um, if the cap happens to come off or you get burnt by hot coolant. Here's an example, when I was a second year apprentice, I had a radiator cap come off and I ended up with a blister that went right around there like that. Um, I had eight days off work and it, each day I had to have that blister cut off. So it's not something you want to go through guys, make sure you're safe. Um, it's a good idea to use a rag over the top of the cap to uh, help release that pressure and always wiggle your cap from side to side like this. Just lift up an edge and you'll hear the pressure start to leak. Take it around slowly, lift it up again, take it around slowly, lift it up again until all that pressure is released and you can grab the hose and quite comfortably squish it all the way together. How much pressure do I put on there? Well it's actually written on the cap. Notice it says here 0.9, that's 0.9 of a kilopascal. So we've got one up here, and what I'm gonna do is just slightly stress it a fraction more, simply because of the fact we wanna push this cooling system to its limit. We wanna stress the head gasket and see if we can get some good results. So what I'm gonna do now is keep an eye on this um, pressure tester, see if it actually drops down over time. I'm also gonna remove the spark plugs to see if the water or coolant is going into the uh, combustion chamber. 
I've pulled out the coils. It's a coil over plug system. And having a look at the top, we can see um, spark plug comes out there or is connected to the spark plug. Looks okay. Have a look at number one. Can you see the difference? Okay, there seems to be a lot of rust material there. Now, I'm not sure if it's coming up through here, through the head itself, or down through the top, but it appears to be sealed okay around the top. And there's the difference between the two um, coils that we can see. So number one is giving me a little bit of an indication that there is moisture or coolant where it shouldn't be. Just pulled the spark plugs out in order. One, two, three, four. Let's have a look at number one. Check it out. She's got a fair bit of uh, rust and corrosion and stuff on there in comparison to, let's say, number four. You can see the difference there, can't you? Even on the thread itself, you can see some rust marks, etc. So while I've pulled out the spark plugs, we can see that the pressure on our pressure gauge, our coolant pressure gauge, has dropped right down to here. Um, so what I'm going to do is just to try and stress it out a bit more, is pump it back up again now that the spark plugs are out, and we'll try our next method. Just set him back up to one again, give it some time and see what happens. Just keep in mind if you do happen to pull out your spark plugs and your coils etc and you intend cranking it with these disconnected you may actually set a fault code which will be logged in the ECU. In that case you may need a scan tool to uh, clear those codes. It's not an issue but it may need to be done to get rid of those uh, fault codes. This is the third time I've pressurised the system and as you can see I've left it for a little bit longer this time and you can see the pressure has really really dropped. What do we do next? Well, we crank the motor and we see if any water comes out of our spark plug holes. So I'll do that. Okay, so we probably didn't see uh, water actually coming out like I expected there would be. So we need to go to the next level to see if we have a blown head gasket. Another method to look for a blown head gasket could include using a TK head check kit. What it does is use a special type of fluid here, which is put into this uh, checker here. Um, once the coolant is down in the radiator, make sure the level is down and the fluid level is up to here. We draw it through this bulb up the top here. And as the gases come through here, they will react with the fluid that's in here and change it from a blue color into yellow if it combines with any combustion gases. I've got the vehicle up to operating temperature again. So now what I'm going to do is try that TK head check and see how that works. So this is the colour that we have right now, sort of a bluish greenish colour. If we have any problem it will turn yellow. So just stick that right in there, make sure I have some pressure on it. And we should see bubbles as the gases get drawn up, like that. So we need to do this for a little while to make sure that we're getting a good flow of uh, gases through. And if there's any problem it should turn yellow. And that's why we had to get rid of some of the coolant, simply because we don't want to drag coolant in there. We just want the gases to react with this uh, test fluid that we're using. So have a look at that colour. It really hasn't changed at all. If it was going to be changed, it would change to something similar to this, like a dull yellow. But this has still got that green uh, blue tinge attached to it. You never put this fluid back in the bottle because you uh, may have tainted it with some sort of uh, either coolant or the gases themselves, you always throw this stuff away, never reuse it. Another method that we can use to check for exhaust gases in the cooling system, or uh, combustion gases at least in the cooling system, is by the use of a gas analyzer. Um, in this particular case, I've got the cooling system, uh, I've had the cap on for a little while, because we want to trap the gases in there. I'm going to use my exhaust gas probe here, um, which is hooked up to my five gas analyzer. Um, but what I'm going to do is just hover it over the top but at the same time put my hand over there and hopefully we'll get some readings on our gas analyzer and see what they tell us. We don't necessarily have to have the vehicle running. Um, we'll just see what the readings tell us for starters then we may run the vehicle. So let's just be careful pulling this cap off of course making sure that there's not much pressure in there which there isn't and then we'll have a look at the readings on the gas analyzer. really not seeing any readings on the gas analyzer there. 
to give us an indication that uh, we've um, got combustion gases in there. Okay, so I didn't get any reading off it at that particular point, so what I'll do now is try it with the engine running. See what we get there. Make sure there's not pressure in there. Just give the cap a wiggle, make sure we're safe. That's alright, come off. Put that over there. Lock this coolant outlet hose so we don't have any gases escaping out there either. As you can see, my hydrocarbons are still reading zero. So to me that indicates that there's not a blown head gasket into the cooling system. I have checked the gas analyzer to make sure that it works correctly. I just put it in the exhaust for a while and got correct readings. So I know the gas analyzer is working fine. But I'm certainly not getting any uh, hydrocarbons coming through my cooling system. If we did have it hooked up to the radiator um, and we had combustion gases coming through the cooling system, I'll just give you an indication of what it might look like. So you would see the hydrocarbons come up uh, in the hundreds, maybe up to a thousand, if you had a blown head gasket. Is there any other checks I can do? I reckon I've got one last trick up my sleeve that may help. You see, one of the major problems with oil and water is they don't get along. They're not the best of friends. In actual fact, they hate one another. They separate all the time. Here, I'll give you an example. If we get a container, clear container, we put some water in it. No big deal. Don't need much. Have a look at that. Water. Oil. Just don't let my wife know that uh, I'm using a... What is that? Extra virgin olive oil. I'll be in trouble for that. Never mind. Get the point across. Not too much. Put a lid on it. And shake it well. Now, while it's activated, while it's being agitated as it would be in the motor, they appear to be working fine. It's just one colour, isn't it? But let's give it some time and see what happens. Okay, that's only 30 seconds, but have a look what's happened. All the water has sunk to the bottom and the oil sits on top. That's because of liquid density. So if we have water in our oil, where do you think it would be? In the sump. Well, the water's going to be in the bottom, in the sump, isn't it? The oil will be sitting on the top. So when you pull the dipstick out, you might just get some oil on the dipstick. Not an indication that there isn't water in the bottom. So there might be two little experiments that we can do to prove whether we have water in our sump Therefore, that would be an indication of either a blown head gasket or cracked cylinder block, cracked head. The list goes on and on. Wouldn't know until I pulled it apart. There's one other thing that would be an indicator that water was getting into the oil. If we pull out our dipstick and we have a close look at the level itself, if it was um, excessively high, which it's not in this case, we can see that it's up to the correct level there. If it was excessively high and milky, that would show that the water was getting into the oil. To me that water, that oil, sorry, looks quite clean, doesn't it? There's one other test that I'm going to do just to quickly determine if I have a blown head gasket. So just like our oil and water experiment we did in the kitchen, water will always sink to the bottom. How's that going to help us? Well, if there's any water in mixed in with the oil, then we should be able to see it as the first fluid that comes out of the sump. So I'm not going to drain the oil, but I'm, pure, I'm simply going to try and see what comes out first, oil or water. So I'll just drain a little tiny bit of whatever's in there and we'll have a look. And we're getting out nothing but oil. So as you can see, there's only oil in there. There's no water or coffee color mixed at all in there. But we still need to figure out where this water is going and why we have this coffee color mix in with our spark plug and also in our uh, oil filler cap. So while there's definitely uh, rust type marks on the coil boot etc and certainly down the hole here I'm not thoroughly convinced that this is a head gasket issue. Um, I am losing pressure, coolant pressure but I've checked the heater core, all external leaks there's definitely no water in the oil or oil in the water. Um, while there was some uh, moisture coming out the exhaust pipe, I believe that was condensation. What I think may be the issue is actually around the top of the radiator, believe it or not. Um, like I said, we're losing pressure. I've just spent about 15 minutes on the phone with the customer and he said there's never been any overheating problems. Um, this has had a consistent 
water loss issue but it's never overheated in any shape or form and over the other side of the radiator the top radiator tank we can see some moisture and staining there so I reckon that's why I'm losing some pressure um, but I'm pretty sure that this is not a head gasket issue I don't want to spend you know X amount of thousand dollars on the customer's vehicle just to find out that it's a faulty radiator so all the testing as far as I'm concerned has proved that it's not a blown head gasket so I was hoping to give you guys a definitive diagnosis of a faulty head gasket but what I've shown you is the different methods of diagnosis to try and find a faulty head gasket in this particular case fortunately it appears that there's not a blown head gasket cracked head or anything along those lines we've checked to find if there was water in the oil oil in the water we pulled out the spark plugs and uh, after pressure testing the cooling system turned it over no water came out even though there was water that came out the exhaust pipe I believe that that was just condensation even using a TK head checker and the gas analyzer gave no indication that there was a blown head gasket or any sort of exhaust gases or combustion gases within the cooling system so where did all that coolant go well it appears that it's not through the heater core I've checked that thoroughly it's not through heater hoses it's uh, not through the water pump but it appears it might be the top tank of the radiator just generally seeping very very slowly customer said he's never had trouble with it overheating the customer has also said that it's been an ongoing thing for quite some time in fact ever since he's had the vehicle over three and a half years ago okay so you've proven that it isn't a blown head gasket but you haven't explained what that milky stuff inside the oil filler cap is have you hmm water is simply a byproduct of the combustion process it's actually normal but what can happen if the engine is not taken up to true operating temperature is that the water can turn into a vapor it hangs around for a while then the engine cools down it condenses and turns back into a liquid if the engine is not taken up to true operating temperature on a regular basis then you'll end up with this milky substance as the water vapor mixes with the blow by gases from the combustion process and it usually ends up in the highest area of your engine which just happens to be the oil filler cap or your rocker cover this particular customer is a baker he starts at 1 a.m. in the morning forget that he doesn't travel very far to work it's only a few kilometers away so by the time he gets to work the engine hasn't heated up properly and of course this happens day after day after day and he ends up with this milky substance in the top does that explain it okay well I can see how that makes sense but what about the rust on the spark plug it's just on number one isn't it and it's just on the thread explain that to me so the rust on the spark plug thread is simply an extension of that condensation issue that we talked about before when I got the vehicle and I went to undo number one spark plug I found it was quite loose talking to the customer later on I found out that he had replaced the spark plugs himself about 20,000 K's ago but I noticed number one was really really loose so think about it combustion takes place in the combustion chamber water being a byproduct creates a vapor which in turn goes to the highest point it goes up the spark plug thread condensates and then eventually causes rust we only saw it in number one didn't we I hope that answers your question okay fair enough I can see how that makes sense I hope that the methods that I've shown you will help you to find a blown head gasket if you suspect that you have one so if you enjoyed this video guys please subscribe to the channel give it a like and feel free to comment down below until next time this is Miracle Max signing off catch you later